It's a bit late, but here is the video for this year's Christmas lights. So if you would have seen um, the video last year, we made the window frames and I had them installed and then also that was there as well. This year we've added the snowflake and also this kind of hacky attempt at a mega tree. So for the remainder of the video I'm going to talk a little bit about how these systems work and how you get all of the fancy patterns. Um, and then if you stick around to the end, uh, there's some like sequenced things. I'll show you that I made an entire song because why not? So, um, yeah, enjoy. Right, so how does it all work? Um, it's actually really, really simple. So, um, if you remember from last year, each, bo each window has a little box on it. And there used to be that there was a little Wi-Fi ESP controller in there. So all the windows on the bottom had a controller, and then the signal went up to the one above it. Um, and then there was a Wi-Fi antenna out here. We're doing it a bit differently now. So we have a centralized controller. So I'll talk a bit about that in a second. But the window frames themselves, just some 20 millimeter electrical conduit with some holes drilled on it, really, really simple. And then the pixels pushed through, they can, you can see they just come right out. So a loop of string all the way around. And then each window has this in it. Um, now because these are five volt pixels, you can get voltage drop, um, which isn't very good. So what we do is we bring um, 19 volts up to each window. We bring it in and then we step that down to five volts at the window to power the pixels. And then we daisy chain that 19 back out and up to the one above it. Same goes for the data. So we bring in two data lines. So there's two different data signals in here that come up. One stops off at this window, the other one keeps going up to the one above it. And then, so that's power sorted. And then all the data come back here. So you can see here's the two data cables. Um, for each window, so each of these has two independent signals in it, so for the top and the bottom, and then for the two windows, this one and this one, and those two. They then go into this controller here. So this is an Ethernet-based controller. Again, it still runs WLED, as we did last year. And then we have the laptop power supply. So we bring in mains power, step that down to 19 volts. We bring that 19 volts up to each window, and we also step it down to 5 volts in the box, which powers the controller. And in this case, it also comes out this data cable that goes up and does this string here. And then we have Ethernet, which is where it receives all of the data. So this controller is handling all of the lights on this side of the house. So that's those four windows as well as them. And then down here, we've got another box, which is, you can see it's exactly the same thing similar laptop power supply we have a bigger voltage regulator in here because this one has also got to power the tree you can see here but again same controller with the ethernet you can actually see there's a little net gear network switch in here so this blue cable is an ethernet cable that comes from the house which has all of the data that controls everything going through it we go into this network switch and we split it and it comes into this controller and then goes out to the controller the other side. But again, same power supply, same regulator, then all of the data just comes out and goes up to each window, same box on each window. And then the tree is really, really simple. It's just three strings held up on a pole and then a star. You can see how it kind of comes in and loops itself around and eventually makes its way back up to the star. So it really isn't, in terms of hardware, it's very, very simple. There's another box there that's just got some extension leads for power in it. And then each of the controller boxes also have these little dehumidifier pads in, just to help with moisture. Um, and you'll also notice in some of these, there's actually bulbs. Um, these are called sacrificial pixels. That's just because these controllers, the signal that it outputs is 3.3 volts, which is logic level. Whereas the LEDs expect it to be five. Um, they don't usually mind, but because we have these long cable runs which go all the way up to like the top window, you can get a bit of voltage drop on the data lines. So what we do is we put in a sacrificial pixel, which it just boosts it up to five. So it, while it's traveling the cable, it's still at the proper voltages, and it just means you get less flickering, um, and it, it makes it work more reliably. You can also see in this window we've got the uh, projector screen. So on the inside there's a projector which is signing backwards with a Raspberry Pi connected to it. And then that lets us play sequences as well as sync the, the video or the animations or whatever it is that I put on there to the lights as well. A little bit of a signal issue on the Snowflake, as you can see. I tried uh, a new brand of LED pixels 
um, but they're not as good. They are a little bit cheaper, but I wouldn't really recommend. Um, you can see we well, do also have some normal static lights. So this tree has got your standard lights. And then there's the bells and the star. They're all connected to the same power supply, so there's just a timer inside. Everything comes on at once. And then there's a Raspberry Pi inside, which is what is actually shouting the data for controlling these lights. So we'll go have a look at that now. And then this is the Raspberry Pi that controls it all. So it's really, really simple. This just runs a single piece of software called Falcon Pi Player. And then we design all of the sequences in a program called X Lights, upload them over the network straight to this guy. Then this has got all of the uh, scheduling in it. So it's like the, the playlists of the sequences that you've made, as well as it handles the timing. Whereas if, if you have multiple Raspberry Pis, you can define like a master that will keep all of the other controllers in sync, whether that's Raspberry Pi is running this bit of software or other LED controllers. Um, so it's really, really scalable. You can even use the HDMI outputs as matrixes and video displays, which is what we've done for the projector. There's just a smaller uh, Raspberry Pi 3. And then this is just connected into the network and you can see how it's it's got the schedules in it and it right now it's playing all the lights so you can see the light blinking away and it's shouting all of the data out to the LED controllers sort of live um, in real time um, via a protocol called DDP. Um, so it's all really, really plug and play. You just tell it the IP addresses of your controllers and if you use X lights to design your sequences, you don't even have to do that. You just click upload and it sorts everything out for you and then you just have to go in and set your schedule so when you want to start and stop and that's really it So there you go, now you know how simple it is and you've kind of seen how it all works. I'm going to sign off now and say thank you for watching. Um, tomorrow I am going to upload a video where so I designed, programmed an entire sequence to a song. Um, not a Christmas song, but uh, you get the idea. So that's going to be uploaded tomorrow, so get subscribed so you don't miss that. Um, I know I've not uploaded anything in a while. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline, it just needs finishing off. So um, hopefully some of that will start coming out soon. Um, so do like and subscribe because it definitely helps um, and it motivates me a lot more to produce content like this. If you like anything that's electronic like this, engineering or servers and networking or RC, whether that's cars, boats, planes, whatever, um, that's all the sort of stuff that shows up on here. So I'm going to say thank you for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed kind of this overview of how these systems work. And uh, don't forget to come back tomorrow so that you can see the sequence. And if it's already tomorrow, uh, then I'll link that at the end of the video and in the description. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.